I'm going to talk about a nine leaf. The one, I think it's the same spring, I, correct me if somebody knows more, from 64, not 63, but 64 right up until the mono leaf was put in. Or, or sorry, there was a 10 leaf later, and I don't know, sometime in the mid 70s, I'm not sure. But for most of the early, for the early C3s, that's what we'll be looking at. Um, the, the story behind what happened, it, just quickly, the, 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 in 1978, the main leaf spring on my, the main leaf on my original spring snapped. And I don't know if anybody's ever had that happen to you while you're on the road, but it is figuratively and literally a kick in the butt. I mean, the car felt like you wanted to jump up like a bomb went off the back. So it, I went, then I went to John R. Spring. They put a new spring in, and it was a GM spring at the time with GM bolt, the whole GM. Well, then when I restored the car in the early 90s, I decided that that spring looked rusty and the leaves, you know, the, the liners didn't look good. So I decided I'll just go out and get another one. And so I did, and I went to a, a Muskegon Brake was, was the first one I bought. And when I put it in, the, um, the, the, uh, the back of the car was up, it looked like, look, like a Ford F-150. <laughs> so through experimentation, I found that the longer the bolt is, the lower the ride, the lower it goes. So I ended up with an 8-inch bolt. And that did a pretty good job. I'll show you pictures of this too, but just this, that's the background. Then when I went to do the, for the National in 2010, I started with it, I wanted to get replace that rusty old spring, and I got another one from Eaton, Detroit. And I bought two of them, one for my car and one for a friend. And before I even got to put it in, I, finished, I painted it, did whatever needed to be done, put the end cups on. I found a good use and a really, really nice used original one on eBay, and I bought it and cleaned that up with the new liners in, and it put it in and the ride, ride height was perfect. The one we put in my friend's car set up like an F-150 truck. And so we went back to my old, I gave him my bolts and he put it in and, and it looks fine. But anyway, so the problem is twofold as far as I'm concerned. I'm not an engineer. So I have no clue about spring rates and about uh, all these other metallurgical things and that. That's not the focus. What I was interested in is one, ride height. Two, the physical configuration of what the spring looks like with, uh, and the liners and all the other parts of the spring, how that compares to what's out in the market today. And so that, that's what I've got. Now, the, pro the big problem is ride height. There's my car after I, put, I started doing the restoration with, the, with that, with that uh, replacement spring. You can tell how high the back is. That car, that car at that point had been driven around a lot, um, and we were just, well, we were working on it. But that's, that's, the, that's what the height, height looked like. And that's one, and here's another, exactly the same thing, up in the air. Now there's the car, after that first picture, same year, with the longer bolts. And you can see it's, you down. Can see it's down in the back, the front and the back look the same. That's, that's right, you can just about tell when you look at a car, look at that 67 out there. I mean, you can tell when you look at it, it's just a proportion that looks right. That's the, that was a month after I bought the car, that's in March of 1971. And... Um, that fellow there is not my son, that's me. <laughs> that's got the original tires on it, and, the, uh, and the, you can see again, the ride height. You can see how even it looks, and it's, it, you can't put your fist between the tire and the fender. There's the car that sits today, with the original spring on it. The tires are not right, those are radials, but, and they're a little bigger, so the car might sit up, physically, the whole car might sit up a little higher. But that's the, that, that matches the front, that's the correct ride height. Here's some, just a couple of charts. I'm not going to read every number here, but uh, this is the, the, the different, the main difference in, in why, it, in the, in the, it, there's a big difference in the thickness of the spring assembled. And the difference, you can see why. Every one of the main leaves on the original, those are, I took with the digital calipers at the center um, of the spring, of the leaf. And every one of those you can see is smaller than the, uh, the Eaton. And the total... Is you can see that at the bottom with the liners, and th that's the, the measurement of the original liners too, which is really close to what I can show you here. <coughs> uh, so it, it's two and a quarter, two, it's about a quarter of an inch thicker. And at that, back there, those, you don't have a lot of room with those bolts. When you put those in, there's not a lot of, a lot of room to have a lot of difference. So it's, it made a difference in appearance and, and when, when we put it in. Again, differences length tip to tip. You, you can see it's not a lot of difference. Uh, sometimes a quarter of an inch, sometimes a half inch uh, in, in the length. And that was, that was taken, run across the arc like this, the total length of, not across it, but, you know, running right along the, the length. And then the height of the arc. And I have examples here of uh, two original springs, 
and what they eat in spring that I never put in my car. Uh, the height of the arc is significantly different. The original has much more arc on the main leaf. Look, nine and seven eighths, the, the uh, Eaton was seven and a half. And then the top three are flat on the original. Now that could also, you now I have to back up on that. It was flat on the spring I put in, but perhaps because it was 40 years old, perhaps it flat, those flattened, I don't know. But that's the observation I made. This is, on the main leaf, the one thing I did find, the main leaf is, is I could not find a difference, except for the arc. It's identical. The, the, the width of it was identical. The thickness, is, again, according to the measurement, was a little bit bigger. Uh, but the cutoff at the end, everything, it was identical. And there's one thing I wanted to also, I want to touch on while you're looking at this picture. If you look, that's the, the original spring with the, with the cup peened on. That's the top of the spring. So the cup's below it. And there's some people have these wonderful tools that make a perfect, perfect sweat. I mean, it looks like it was, you know, it looks so nice and neat. Except in the factory, the, the directions in the AIM says peen over, period. And I think they just used a big flat hammer and peened it because that's the original. It's split. It's not neat, but it, it just held in, held in place. That's no. Well, here's a better picture. That's the original how it was peened over. And um, the the one on the left is always going to in the picture is always going to be the original spring. The one on the right is the Eaton. It looks from this picture that the the, the Eaton is skinnier. It's not the same, but it is. It's just the photo. And when I got the spring, the cups. They, were, they had a, a surface rust over, all, all over it. Um, so what I did was I, I put it in, if anybody's ever used something called Evaporust, that's the best product you'll ever use for, for de-rusting. It's incredibly good. Well, I, I stood it up somehow and put each end uh, in Evaporust to get rid of all the rust to see if there's any plating. Once it was completely clean metal, I put it in muriatic acid to see if I'd get any bubbling because that means there'd be some residual plating. It was nothing. So I believe, and others have said the same, that those were not plated. They were just raw steel and put on and they all rusted or well, they, they started to rust. Any of the new replacements you buy are all zinc plated, bright shiny zinc plating, which is what's on this Eaton spring here. The first thing that you notice, and this, you can, this is a tip off, if you ever want to look at a spring, you want to know if it's, if it's an original or a reproduction or a whatever, is if you see the scalloping, you can see that scallop, the grind, it looks like it's ground off in there, yeah. and the Eaton and every other replacement I've ever seen is just straight up. And that's the biggest tip off right there. There's another good, sh good shot of that. You can see it really well there. That's from above. You can see the Eaton spring, just a straight angle. It's angled, but it's just, it's just straight, and you can see this. I call it a scallop, but I don't know what to call it, an indentation. The next is the, the edge, the, the lift up at the edge. The left, again, is the Eaton spring, and you can see from this another view of the scallop or the, the ground out, whatever you call it in there. But you can see it's so much gentler, the, the turn up at the end. And on the Eaton, it's like right angled. Not right angled, I don't mean that. A sharp angle is what I meant. And that's everyone I've ever seen that's, that I've seen a replacement has looked like that. There's another good, this is a good, good picture of it. The one on the right, again, is really sharp angled, and then the, the original is not. Now to the bolt that holds it together. None of these here that I have with me here are the right bolt. Um, what the big difference, and it makes a difference. You don't see it, but it does make a difference. You can see the head of the bolt. The bolt head. <coughs> Um, it, and this, makes, this could make a big difference when you put it together. It's only 730 seconds high on the original, again on the left, and you can see how bigger the Eaton mm -hmm. one is. Now, it's hidden, you don't see that once the car is on the, spr on the it springs on the car. However, there's an indentation in the bottom of the universal, the rear end, that that fits into. And if that indentation is, if, if it's not deep enough, I'm not sure if these will, the Eaton would fit or not, but I know that people have said that it'll go up there and you'll bolt it, but the spring is not sitting where it belongs because that's hitting, that's interfering. And so the first thing I did, the first thing that I did, I used the, the bolt when I reassembled my spring, um, ground off the top of that bolt down to match the original. So I, I, did, I can tell you, if you don't have those U-bolts uh, around that center bolt hole, if you don't have that clamped up so that it's flat through there, your high stress is gonna be right where that center bolt is, and your leaf is gonna break right through that hole. So it's very important to have the center part of your spring tightened flat through there, not uh, having any kind of an arc on it. And if you have that bolt head too long, you won't have it flat. So right. it's very important to have it flat. And right, it's very, very big. Here's the length. The original bolt was much, much shorter. However, it may have gone on longer. And then I think they, they just lopped it off. They just cut it off. When I put it in, I just um, 
I just cut it off. Tightened it down, we had it real tight, and then just cut it off. The other difference is on, on, the, uh, on the, the, the bolt, there's an un, unthreaded shoulder on the original that is, the, the original shoulder is an inch and five eighths long. You can from almost see down. it from the head, under the head to where the threads begin. Yeah. Excuse me, on the Eaton, it's only three eighths of an inch. So in fact, the spring, I don't know that it matters. Truthfully, again, I'm not doing an engineering study here. I'm just showing the differences, what I found when I did it. That's the last slide, but I want to talk about a couple of things. The, the other thing that's, that was significantly different on, on these, uh, the liners. Um, there's been a lot of talk on the discussion board about liners, that, the, and I have examples here. This, this, this one here. The most of the reproduction liners are this material. I just pass this around. It's, it's plastic, it's thin, and I've seen, I've seen springs that haven't even put on the car yet. And that liner is scuffed, and it's almost, it's almost uh, just from assembling it, it got scuffed, and, and, and it looks like it's going to tear through right away. And that's, in fact, what the comments on the discussion board are, that they put it on in a couple of hundred miles or even less, the liners are off-center, they're, 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 they're kind of bunched up underneath. And, um, and, but, however, the one thing that I found from Eaton, you can buy it by the foot. You can buy a 100-foot roll if you want, and you make up your own. This is the Eaton, the one that Eaton sells. It's absolutely, except for one small little th difference, it was, it's really, really good and almost identical to the original. The thickness is the same, the H, they call it I-beam, the H-beam pattern, whatever you want to call it, is the same. The only difference was if you look at the profile of the, of the H or the I-beam, whatever you call it, the sides are a little curved on this. There's a little curve to it. Whereas on the original, I remember, and I made it in my notes, they're absolutely straight. But that's it. The only other thing, there's a cutout for those four bolts to go up into the universal to hold the thing on there. There's a cutout. They cut away, like this, the, uh, the, the plastic. And the, um, on, on, the, on the Eaton spring, the, um, the cutout for those bolts was seven, is seven inches wide, and on the original it was only six inches wide. Again, Nobody ever noticed that. I mean, it's something that only you know if you do it. But again, it was a different. What I did was once I, ma I made a, a, a little jig out of some wood and uh, clamped it to the, um, uh, clamp the, um, what do you call it? Clamp the, the liner, each liner in between the wood, then cut it with a sharp knife in, in the jig. And then when I went to put it on, went to put it, they were all identical. Right off the main hole, they were all identical at the right, the right, um, uh, the opening was the right opening, you know, the width still here. But anyway, that's all I got. And so there's some, inf some information. Yeah.